They're used in every corner of the world. 600 million daily, to be exact. That's a lot of disposable razors and a lot of guys who'd start their day differently if it wasn't for a salesman who got tired of knocking on doors. It's 1895 in Brookline, Massachusetts. King Gillette psychs himself to make his pitch on yet another porch. He was quite successful. He sold bottle caps up and down the East Coast. Almost everybody who met him seemed to like him. They found him very sort of easy to get along with. And he had a sort of charm about him. But Gillette isn't a natural at sales. He hates rejection. And he's much happier making things than selling them. He was always taking bits of hardware out of his sales box and trying to improve them. He couldn't, you know, I think he was a bit of an obsessive and couldn't stop tinkering and thinking about improvement all the time. One guy Gillette really looks up to is his boss, William Painter. The guy who invented the disposable bottle cap that Gillette's selling. And he'd had a tremendous success with one invention, which I think was the idea that most inventors, Gillette included, always have, is that one single idea is going to make your name. King, may I give you a piece of advice? The boss's advice will change everything. He tells Gillette, come up with a product that can only be used once. Something which creates a customer, a new customer, every time you sell him one because he uses it and he needs another one. In other words, something disposable. Until now, Gillette thought the key to success was building things that last. And the idea that something that encouraged waste or encouraged disposability was, uh, was a different way of thinking for him. Gillette can't stop thinking about his boss's advice. Inspiration comes suddenly in front of the bathroom mirror in one painful moment. He's cut himself with a dull razor it happens often in the 1800s because men are using the same thick, straight blade over and over again. First problem shaving with a straight razor was it's an open blade, which if it cut you, could cut you very deeply. The other problem was there was no penicillin and blood poisoning was pretty common. People would die from shaving. Gillette's imagination starts to whirl. What if he could create a razor that doesn't need sharpening? Something that could be thrown away before it gets dull, preventing all those nasty, dangerous cuts. At that point, he thought you'd use it once, and you'd throw it away, and you'd buy another one. For him, this was the eureka moment, so much so that he telegrammed his wife that day and said, I've got it. Our fortune is made. Gillette starts experimenting with sheet steel, the only material that's inexpensive enough to be disposable. But he soon finds out it's too soft to keep a sharp edge. It was about six months before he got a prototype into shape, and that was not what you'd call a working prototype. It didn't work. You couldn't shape with it. He realizes he'll have to ask for help from people who know about metal. Gillette took it to people at MIT. He took it to cutlers. He took it to engineers. Everyone told him not to bother. They said that the sheet steel he was using was too soft and wouldn't take an edge, and it couldn't be forged or hardened because it was too thin. It would just buckle. He still doesn't give up, but his efforts are going nowhere until a young MIT grad arrives on the scene. William Nickerson at your service. William Nickerson was known by local businessmen and entrepreneurs as someone who could solve the unsolvable. If anyone could make Gillette's razor work, it was William Nickerson. Nickerson realizes that sheet steel on its own is not going to work. Then, suddenly, the solution becomes clear. How about sandwiching? using sheet steel in between other kinds of metal, like the filling between slices of bread. Sheets of iron will provide outer strength, 
sheets of copper will conduct heat and in the middle a thin layer of sheet steel for the blade. Now the blades can be heated and cooled without buckling. The result? A piece of metal thin enough to be a blade, strong enough to hold a sharp edge, and cheap enough to be mass-produced and disposable. Gillette patents the invention, and over the next decade, his razors sell by the millions. When America enters World War I, the U.S. government supplies its soldiers with Gillette razor kits because a close shave guarantees a tight-fitting gas mask and increases the men's chances of surviving a gas attack. Gillette was the last of a breed of people, or among the last of a breed of people, who came up with a single idea, started a company, started manufacturing it, and became rich. Gillette, the guy who changed the face of a nation and is still a household name more than a century later. Other bright ideas of the 1900s? 1906, the electric cash register tallies the bill as fast as your fingers can fly and churns out a receipt for every sale. And 1901, the flamethrower, a scary new weapon that spews out flammable liquid at high velocity to stop the enemy in his tracks. Coming up, a young man comes up with a hot idea for how to cool down and sets a new standard for indoor comfort. Controlling indoor humidity was once just a crazy idea. As hopeless as ordering the rain to stop or the sun to shine. Until a brilliant guy from Buffalo proved that it is possible and that control means comfort. In 1902, Willis Carrier is a keen young electrical engineer working for a heating and ventilation company. On this muggy summer morning, he's on a mission. Carrier believed that you could do anything in life if you set your mind to it. He really believed in hard work. Today's job is at a high-end publishing company. Extreme heat and humidity are messing up the paper as it goes through the printing machines. Sackett Wilhelms was a publishing company that published in color and it was important for the paper to go through the printing presses the same way each time to take on a new color. The damp air is making the paper swell and shrink, so it's a different size every time it goes through the machine, which means the colors don't match up. Carrier's assignment? Figure out how to make room temperature and humidity remain constant. Controlling temperature is one thing, but nobody has ever come up with a safe and reliable way to control the exact percentage of humidity in a room. Carrier becomes obsessed. How to make a room less humid without making it too dry? One of Carrier's interesting personality traits was that he had tremendous focus when he was thinking of an engineering problem, he couldn't be distracted by anything else. Uh, that meant that he often forgot everyday details of life. 
and everyone had a story about Carrier's famous absent-mindedness. It's not until many weeks later, on the platform of a foggy train station, that it all starts coming together. Carrier knows that fog is air that's 100% saturated with water. That makes him wonder, what if he could create 100% humidity so he has an exact starting point, then add enough dry air to reduce humidity to 55%, just like the boss ordered. Carrier knew if he could recreate fog, he would have 100% saturated air, he would know precisely how much humidity he had, and he would have the basics to reproduce any relative humidity that he wanted. Carrier gets to work. He puts together a box where he can trap air and control what happens to it inside. He also gathers a few common tool shed accessories, a couple of fans, a garden sprayer, and heating coils. He'll use one fan to suck hot outside air into the box. Then he'll lower the temperature of that air with a fine spray of cold water. As the air passes through the water, it turns into fog. Now, Carrier's got 100% relative humidity. Next, he starts reducing the level of humidity by adding a precise amount of dry air to the chamber, exactly the right amount to bring relative humidity down to 55%. Not too damp, not too dry. Now, Carrier can release that perfectly conditioned air into the printing room. His client is delighted with the result. Carrier's unique idea has created perfect temperature and humidity, the world's first air conditioner. A very few people would have thought of using water to take excess moisture out of the air. Carrier perfects his contraption and gets a patent in 1906. His invention revolutionizes everything from textile factories to movie theaters. Carrier reset our expectations about indoor comfort. We now expect to have wonderful weather every day, even if we have to stay inside to get it. He goes on to form Carrier Engineering Corporation with seven other bright young innovators. The result? An international success story worth billions. Cool inventions of the 1900s? 1903, the crayon, a non-toxic stick of wax and pigment, turns kids into artists and marks the start of a colorful century. And 1908, the Model T Ford, nicknamed the Tin Lizzie, rolls off the assembly line and introduces modern mobility to middle-class America. Coming up, a desperate janitor with bad lungs takes the misery out of rug cleaning. 